uh, Rick, Rick was connected with me before uh, he got into the dad's group and he actually came into the dad's group. Uh, out, he, he reached out and we had a call. Uh, wasn't the right time for him. About a year. Was it a year, Rick? Maybe about a year. About a year goes by and he reached out again. And I was like, hey, man, like you just come to the group, get in here and I'm going to show you a couple things within like two days. He was in there. He's like, I'm in. Let, let's do this stuff. And so he was inspired by another guy that came in here, Justin Dunham. Uh, Justin's interview is under the guide section. If you guys want to go watch that, he just completed his first marathon, just signed up for his second marathon and started with us a little over a year ago at 250 pounds, sick and tired of being sick and tired and wanted to be a better leader for his daughters. He reached out to me the other day and was like, Hey man, why'd you turn me into a marathon runner? And I'm like, that's not me. And I'm not a runner that you took that and ran with it. No pun intended. Uh, and that just shows you the power of the mind. And so without further ado, uh, let me let me go ahead and intro Zach, Anthony, and Rick all at the same time, man. I'm pumped for tonight. How you guys doing? You excited? Great. Doing awesome. great, man. We're here to listen about, about Rick's story. Love it. Love it. And he's, Anthony's rocking his uh, Lions Not Sheep hat, so he's in full uh, full mode here. So let's get into go it. Time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I uh, do that. I told you a side note there, that relationship stuff uh, hit home with me big time, man. I'm, I've already had the heart to heart with the wife. I'm like, hold, hold this space for me, baby. Um, but here's, here's the thing. Well, so I want to, I want to kick this off by really, uh, really kind of opening it up here just towards Rick and, and really kind of get what his initial view was. Because if you saw in the announcement post, obviously I just kind of kicked this off by, you know, teed this up by letting you know, Hey, Rick was skeptical. It took him a year to come around, but he wasn't in this group. He didn't have the video content that you guys have. It doesn't. He didn't get to see us every every, every single week, uh, bringing you this kind of content every single week. And so, uh, yeah, there was some skepticism. He came in here and watched a couple videos and like, dude, let's let's do this. So, Rick, talk me through that process first, man. Let's go there. Kind of, you know, what was your before you got in the group? Like, I knew you were sick and tired of being sick and tired because we'd had a prior conversation, but. What was it that kind of triggered that action? Like, was there a process that you went through or was it literally just how I mapped it out? Walk us through that. Okay. You know, it's so, um, you know, I was born on a stormy night. Oh, wait a minute. Too far back. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, you know, I have, you know, I've really been through the ringer, you know, over the last, you know, even let's just go back as much as like five, to, you know, five, six years. You know, uh, in 2015, I was diagnosed with a pituitary brain tumor, which for those that aren't familiar with it, it, it's located right around here. So near the ocular joint. So it messes with your pituitary glands. It can mess with your thyroid. It messes with cortisol levels, and it can actually do significant damage to your muscular skeletal system. So to say the least, getting around was damn near impossible miserable yeah it kills your energy you know it killed my energy and you know the fact that it messed with my cortisol levels cortisol can help generate fat gain mm -hmm. and ballooned up huge i mean it was getting to the point to where you know one minute i was three bills then it was 320 340 360 and it just kept the scale just kept going the wrong damn way and no matter what i tried i tried every bad diet out there i tried keto i tried whole 30 i tried slim fast i tried weight watchers you know i tried you're desperate i i tried everything under the sun and the problem with those fad diets is it's almost like you know the it's it's basically insanity because insanity the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and again no and for result so I needed something new and you and I had talked, you know, briefly a couple times and it just wasn't in the cards for me. And then one day you had me ch watch out, check a couple videos and I'm like, okay, you know what, if this guy can do it, I know I can. Yep. And that was it. And I just got dialed in, got dialed into the process because at that point I wasn't just getting another quick fix you know right. there was an explanation you and i talked had some real we talked about some real shit and we talked about real demons real backgrounds built everything i tried what i tried before 
And there wasn't like, it wasn't like a quick sale. It was like, you wanted to make sure I, I felt that you really wanted to know what was going on and where I was trying to go. And even if it might not have been a good fit, you were still willing to help me. So, you know, the pressure was off for me to just get real, just let my guard down and just have a real conversation, a real man to man conversation. No doubt. And, you know, a couple of things I made very clear was, you know, I'm not going to give up burgers. I'm not going to give up beer, you know, but at the same time, I don't want to have to drink a bunch of protein shakes. I don't want to eat a bunch of freaking bars. I don't want to have to be in the gym two and a half hours a day, 10, you know, five, six days a week. I I'm busy, you know, I got a desk job and, but at the same time, I want to just be able to get my life back together. And mm -hmm. we, we talked and. We, I, I felt comfortable with moving forward and between, you know, the group, the support I've had from day one, you know, the availability of you, Anthony, Zach, the love and support I've gotten from, from day one of the group, you know, of the other dads, you know, and the fact that this was just a real program and the education from the curriculum that's in there, you know, the videos, the, the workouts, the app, everything is easy to follow. It was, there were so many different tools. I never felt lost. Love and, it. And I ever had, and that's just how it's been from day one. And it took off and, you know, I, I've hit hurdles. You know, I'm not going to lie. There's been times where I've been down and out. I've been, you know, sick. There's been times where I haven't been able to make, get to the gym. And I just kept thinking back, okay, well, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do it the same way over and over and over again. So I thought back to something that Anthony said on the very first call when he joined was <clears throat> make it fun. So I thought, started thinking about ways to make this fun. And I kind of chalked this idea back up to, um, what's that show called? The Biggest Loser. Yep. where I think it's like halfway through the program, they did this thing called the put it back on challenge where they put these weight vests on with all of the weight they lost. Yep. And you're fully entrenched in that now, my man. I love it. I can't now, Brandon, I couldn't do that with just a weight vest. So I wanted to get a little creative and a little fun. <laughs> like, you know what my, I have a, now a, she is now a year and a half old Husky that we adopted when she was seven weeks old and she, I was like, you know, she weighs about 60 pounds. So one day and uh, she was she kept circling me when I was at the bottom of the stairs and I looked up and I'm like, you know, there's 22 stairs to get up to the next floor. So to coin the, a phrase, a famous phrase from one of my very favorite video games that now recently became a movie in my right. best scorpion voice, I said, get over here. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Years. And, not bad yeah no, that's and, good. Then i've done some i've done some I, crazy stuff but you know it's it's not always been it's not always been balloons and celebration i've had, had some some moments where i've really needed to reach out to the support for support and chat and phone calls and everything like that with my fellow dads and that's what's really helped me stay laser focused no, I love it. Let's uh, let's go back yeah. to the <clears throat> to the fitness thing. Fitness is fun, and, and Anthony, I'm going to let you let you chime in here because, you know, I think that that is a foundational piece of what we do. Okay, and and I we got a, a new guy over uh, in Unleash Your Legacy today can, come from this group, um, and and I was giving him our presentation and showing him behind the scenes, which at the time, Rick, we did not have set up, so you didn't even get all like the nitty gritty. We've evolved a lot, right? But I was showing him the presentation. I was like, and you're on there. Of course, you're a poster child for what we do, man. It's like, it's it's badass. I'm just going to tell you, like, I, you are not going away and we are going to see this through. I cannot wait till you crack that 200 mark, dude. Like that's coming. All right. So I'm going to get back to the fun part because in our presentation now, really try to highlight that because I think, and I'm firmly believe what Anthony says. And so we'll let him kind of expand on this, but we make it fun, dude. And like the, the food, right? There's no chicken, brown rice, and broccoli. I mean, unless you're Zach, like he eats some of that prison food, but like the, the brown <laughs> rice. Every once in a while. Every once in a while. <laughs> it, it's that, it's this like stigma that guys have. It's like when I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do, I'm going to work on becoming the healthiest version of myself. 
I'm going to have to eat chicken, brown rice, and broccoli every day. And it's not that. So Anthony, chime in because I think your, uh, your angle on the, you know, fitness must be fun is, is pretty valuable. And uh, it's, it's such a crucial part of what we do. Yeah, hundred percent. So I think for the most part, no matter where you're at, we get caught up in the fact that we think going to the gym, fitness, eating healthy, it's, it's punishment, right? It, it's yeah. something that we are doing and, and dread completely. Whereas maybe you don't actually dread what you're doing or, or the actual gym or the process. Maybe you just haven't found the right thing for you yet. And sometimes that means switching it up too. And I know Rick's done a great job of that as well. Like, you know, and that's part of what you rely on us on in the group for as well. So the, the biggest problem is people automatically think, oh, I got to go to the gym. And, and they just have the wrong mentality and the wrong mindset around it. It's a lot of mindset. It really is. But that's okay. If you find that you enjoy when you get there and when you're in the middle of the process and how you feel afterwards, that's what you need to focus on, right? And in the, in the midst of it also, find things that you enjoy doing. You know, a lot of us played sports. I know Rick's super competitive, right? So that competitive edge, I guarantee, comes out in the gym and in what he's doing, and I guarantee that makes it even more fun for him. So he's going to challenge himself with little challenges. Seeing the wins stack up in our group when you're posting PRs and new records and new goals shattered every single time, that's, that's what I appreciate about Rick so much is because he is super competitive, right? And we all have that competitive fire in us somewhere. We just have to find it. So what are we going to be competitive in? It, it can just be competitive with ourselves, but that's what makes it fun to me is those, those friendly competitions and then the friendly banter in the group as well that we, uh, that we all enjoy. And it, it goes between, uh, you know, Jason, Zach, and myself too. We're, we're competing with each other a little bit too uh, on some of the things. So fitness does not have to be punishment. Fitness does not have to be something you dread. It does not have to be something that you want to avoid at all costs. If anything, we just need to find the right thing for you. And, and then, you, you know, once you start to see results, then it becomes even more fun, right? So no matter yeah. what you're doing, so then it becomes super fun. Like to me, the, the gym is my happy place. That's my alone time. That's my, I'd rather do that than go to a movie theater. Then and honestly, I'd rather probably go to the gym now. This sounds bad than maybe go to some sporting events, right? So uh, it just, yeah, I mean, so so that's where we got to get you guys towards, and we can help you with that, right? That's that's the big thing. So that's that's how I uh, that's that's my uh, goal or strategy around it. A lot of that is mindset too, and like you said, I mean, I know Zach, you do you do a bunch of sports on the side. Like, I think here's the thing: is is you don't have to fall in love with the process, but you absolutely will fall in love with the results. You absolutely will fall in love. You'll become addicted to the way that you feel. That's it. And when you start to get confident, right? Like Rick has been with us, I get a little over six months. Okay. And Rick has become a leader in our community. Rick knows the curriculum, like the back of his hand, and he has taken massive action on all of the pillars. All right. And so when he's in there teaching, this is a man who is almost 400 pounds. He's in there teaching new members like, Hey, this is what I did to really simplify it. Like a meditation thing. I love that you broke it up to two, five minutes. Cause you didn't want to commit you know, to a, a longer session, you know, you got to find what works for you. And to your point, Anthony, with the fitness piece, it's like, whatever is going to be your best move in terms of a long-term vision. And that's what we're really big on. It's like, and I told you from the start, Rick, it's like, Hey, do you see yourself becoming a gym guy? And you're like, yeah, like that's where I want to go. Well, like we were locked down and there was a lot of stuff going on here in Michigan. So it's even more locked down. So we started off with the resistance bands. That's what you had. It's like, look, there's a lot we can do uh, than just fitness. We get so fixated on the, I got to eat cardboard and I got to work out like an animal every day, or I'm never going to reach my goal. And that's why the four pillar piece is so crucial. And, and Zach, you can go ahead and stack on your little sleep and stress management gig if you want, because these guys need to know, like, that's one of the things Rick, and, and you can, let, let's let, have you chime in first, because you, you, we know that you're putting in the work in the gym, the results are there, all that's, all that's there. We know that you're eating healthy. You post your meals, you show your badass meals, you show your healthy meals, which are also badass. Tell us about those other two pillars and the role that they played in your life. And then Zach, you can kind of chime in on the science piece because I think this, that right there is what so many guys are missing in their life. And if you would just embrace these four pillars, those first two, the diet and the exercise piece become a lot less stressful, a lot less overwhelming because that's not all you're thinking about. When you get those hormones working for you instead of against you, can't outwork a bad diet, you can't outwork hormones either. 
So let's go there for a minute, Rick, because I think you can add a lot of value with, with as serious as you took the pillars. Sure. So let's start with the stress management first. You know, one of the, one of the key four pillars. We all live stressful lives, whether it's kids, money, finances, job stress, work stress, uh, you know, just life stress in general. And, you know, like you said, it was true. You know, I never really got into the whole, you know, relaxation thing. It really wasn't my thing. You know, I just, I kind of just left it, bot I left it bottle up until I explode. And I wasn't really too keen on, you know, taking like 15 minutes, 20 minutes out of my day to do something like that. Because I understand. I'm like barely able to, you know, have a few minutes myself. I understand. But I went on YouTube one day and I said, you know, all right, let me just look for it. I'm willing to dedicate five minutes. I've got, you know, I've yep. got five minutes. That's all I've got right now. So I just went on YouTube and looked up five, literally typed in five minute meditations. Yep. And a bunch of them came up and I'm like, wow, there's a ton of them out here. So I gave a couple of them a listen and a couple of them didn't work for me. A couple of them didn't jive, but then there was a couple that clicked. Yep. You know, you're going to find something that works for you, whether it's a, a monotone voice guiding you, yep. whether it's just soothing relaxation music, whether it's a, you know, a sound machine where you're listening to thunder, lightning, rivers, whatever, you got to find what's work for, works for you. And it's been a couple different things. It depends on the time of the day I do it, my mood, how I felt the night before, and really how stressed out I am. And the more I did it, you know, the more, the more frequently I did it, the more I found it really helped me get through my day you know I get an hour lunch at work so I find that when I first get up in the morning before I have my cup of coffee I do a meditation when it's just me and no one else is in the house away then at my lunch before I step away from my computer because I've got a desk job after I punch out for lunch I've got an hour so okay you know I'm gonna do another meditation for another five minutes that allows me to decompress from whatever happened at work that morning. And it's five minutes. Like, that's it. It's yeah. five minutes. If you can't commit five minutes to your own personal headspace, you're, you're not serving yourself, right? You're, not, you're doing yourself an injustice, in my opinion. Yeah, and that's going to carry on. And then that series is going to carry on through the whole day. And it's going to carry on to your sleep. And you're going to talk. And you're going to turn. And your mind's going to race. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to happen. And then you're going to find yourself staying up all night, eating a bunch of crap you don't need to be, or fi just finding that you just can't unplug mm -hmm. from life, whether it's social media, TV, whatever, you're going to be up till three or four o'clock in the morning. And you're going to be like, Oh, great. It's 4am. I'm going to get up at six and work. All because of five minutes, a five minute commitment to yourself, a couple five minute commitments. Now I get it. There's all the other stuff you're doing, but like that piece alone is powerful extremely powerful and so zach you talked about I, this is this is my trigger to get zach you talked about the aimless eating right the snacking and all that shit so zach throw it in there man like why is this happening to rick when he wasn't prioritizing that stuff all right man so and welcome we, welcome to the pro welcome to the live stream zach <laughs> yeah thank you thank you i just been watching I'm like wow this is how it feels to listen to three other guys instead so <laughs> So look, guys, all right, we have four pillars, right? And stress, stress management, sleep optimization are two of them, but really they could be one if we really think about it because okay. they are so highly dependent on each other and they, they work so closely together. Like to Rick's point, calming him down, reducing his stress before he slept, helped him sleep better. So when our stress is high, our sleep is low. And when our sleep is low, our stress is high. They work, they just work like that. They yeah. both need to be working together or they're going to work against each other. Now to get more into the science of it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. There's a, there's a, there's three particular hormones that I like to talk about when it comes to stress and, and, and sleep. And that's going to be ghrelin, leptin, cortisol. Okay. Cortisol number one is going to be the key inhibitor of testosterone. And all of us dudes in here know that testosterone is the number one hormone in our body that is going to make us the men we are. So we absolutely need to have our testosterone as high as it possibly can be so that we can feel great, have good energy, have high libido, and we just don't walk around feeling like life's passing us by. Yeah, and when we get yeah, good, when we, when, yeah, and when we, we get great levels of sleep, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And when we get great levels of sleep, our cortisol is most drastically reduced during that REM sleep, that very, very deep state of sleep. So that is the importance of that. Now, Let's say, let's flip, the, let's flip the script. Let's talk about a, a, a crappy night of sleep, okay? Say you went into, you know, went into your night very stressed, very stressed. You had a bad night of sleep. This is what's going to happen. First of all, your cortisol is not going to reduce as much as it should have. You're going to have a little amount of sleep. So what's going to happen is that those two other hormones I talked about, leptin and ghrelin, 
Ghrelin is going to be your hunger hormone. Leptin is going to be your satiating hormone, your, your fullness hormone. They work inversely. You can't have both. You can't have both. So guess what happens? You sleep like shit. You are going to crave all day long, right. all day long. Those days. Yep. I know you've That's experienced it. I've experienced it. Yeah. I've experienced, I experienced it in Texas last week because I slept so little for the last three days. Right. <laughs> when you sleep for a small amount of time, what happens is your ghrelin just skyrockets. That Can't stay up till 4 what, what hormones are, guys? Guys, what hormones are is literally each hormone is just a messenger that has one single message to send. And yeah. ghrelin's, ghrelin's message is, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm that's hungry, it. I'm hungry. And that's all you're gonna get all day long. So if you ever had those days where you had a crappy night's sleep and you were just craving snack food, away. no matter what you ate, snack, 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 you were, did not feel full, that's ghrelin. Yep. So, no, I love it. I love it. it. That's exactly what we're looking for here, man. Give you guys some awareness. If you're not, if you're this is the first time, you guys getting value out of this. If you are, drop the word value in the comments now. If you're a first time listener, man, like this is what you can come to expect. Like we're going to bring you real, raw, and relevant information that you can plug into your life right now. We're giving you the why behind the how. The how is get your ass to bed. The why is what Jack, what Jack, what Zach just explained, right? Like I was trying to put Zach <laughs> and just at the same time. Um, all right, let's, let's switch to food. Okay, here's, this, this is the one that everybody loves to talk about. And obviously, Rick, you came from nearly 400 pounds, so you know how to eat. You've proven in the community that you know how to eat. And you've also proven that you can lose 110 pounds and was it 198 days? Is, is that, is that the one? 198, 110 pounds in 198 days, still eating like a man. And I love when you post that. You're like, and I still eat like a man, Dan. Uh, so, so let's go there. Because when you uh, when you first reached out, that's it. You, you told me we had that that heart to heart. And you're like, I'm not giving up burgers and beer. I'm like, dude, have you seen the logo? <laughs> but it was yeah. like, we're going to be a match made in heaven. It's okay. Um, but with that being said, let's talk food, man. Like, how did you, how would you even navigate that? Coming from a guy who was eating all the time and had ghrelin and leptin all over the map. Let's, let's go there. Talk, talk, uh, talk to these guys and, and talk to them about the nutrition aspect, because it's, it's easy to hear it from a Zach or a, an Anthony or a Jason when we're fit. And just so you guys know, like that Dallas trip, by the way, uh, I came back and I gained six pounds. Uh, I got on the scale today at the gym. That's two workouts. I'd only done one set. I did my warm up set of leg press and went and got on the scale, all six pounds gone. That's how dialed in we are when we're in our routine. And that's why none of us cared about going to Dallas and gaining six or seven pounds. Because the reality is, is when you're that dialed in, your body knows right back where it wants to go. And that's the magic of what we do. And so <laughs> Rick's body knows right where it's headed, right? Sub 200. Let's do this. So let's go to nutrition, man. Talk to us about that. Talk to us how you even map that out in your mind. Because I know damn good and well, you're like, look, this is going to be probably the hardest part for me to figure out. So walk us through that, unpack that a little bit, because there's a lot of guys out there. They might, they might only be 250 or might only be 220. Maybe they want to get to 180. Why did that process become so simple for you? Well, the first like 24 hours, you know, before I even like officially like hit the ground running piece, I was waiting for, you know, my body to adjust, my mind to adjust to this whole concept and everything like that and getting ready to plan out like my workouts for the week because how, and how I was going to start my workouts come Monday because I did this on a Saturday. Right. So what I did is I just immediately just dove headstrong into the curriculum. I'm like, you know what? I'm invested in this. Let me, let me get educated because that's the bottom line. Let me find out the science between behind why I need to er eat a certain way, but within, you know, with it, not within the confines of like a restricted diet, because there's nothing restricted about what we do. No, nope. but just more of a science behind why I was eating certain foods at certain times. Yeah. The you know, the long and short of it was that our body still needs to eat fat. You know, you still need to eat fat to burn fat, but you got to do the right kind. It was just a matter of the right kinds. I mean, you know, and just learning about all the different healthy fats out there that were actually in foods I already loved, you know, yeah. like, you know, avocado, avocados, avocado oil, you know, olive oil, 
eggs, you know, cheese. All different. foods you have no problem eating. Yep. No, I mean, foods I already had no problem eating because yep. I didn't hear the word shake. And I think Anthony lives off of eggs, by the way. And <laughs> I'm an egg yeah. guy, man. Sex Can't guy. buy the organic that are eight bucks for 12, though. I won't go there. I'll, I get the mid tier because I eat too many. Yeah. <laughs> right from the farm for me. Oh, nice. you're in Nebraska. Corn fed, right? Mm, I'm Absolutely. jealous on that. So, anyway. Yeah. And then being able to, you know, and then finding out that I didn't have to give up carbs. You know, because I'm a big carb guy. I mean, I'm sorry. I like bread. I Who like doesn't bread. like carbs, dude? Like, this is not this is not a secret. That there's not a guy walking the fa- the pla- uh, planet Earth that doesn't love carbs. It gets, <laughs> it's a fact, right? Unless you live in the, the, the oh. forest and you're living off of earthworms and, like, killing dude. your own prey, you're probably not eating carbs. But otherwise, those not a lot of those people out there left. If you live in America, you love carbs. Doesn't take a long look around to see that. Right, it's an issue, but you learn how to eat carbs. Exactly, and I learned when to eat them and what to incorporate them with, and what to do afterwards on the days that hey, let's face it, life happened, and I didn't get to eat the way I wanted to eat. I didn't, you know, I'm not planning this stuff like weeks in advance. You know, I don't have like a set calendar that tells me, okay, I got to eat six ounces of boneless, skinless bait chicken <laughs> measure out in your palm do this measure this weigh this with a palm sized portion of yeah. rice and some steamed broccoli no it's okay you know let me get a protein on my plate let me get some veggies on there you know let me get some color on there because i want you know i appeal as belly appeal Yep, and, and it's dinner time, so let me get some carbs on there, and then let me go ahead and make an extra portion because hey, if I don't eat it. Guess what? That's lunch the next day. Hundred percent. Oh, I don't have to cook twice. Right. And, and then at the same time, get giving myself something to look forward to. Cheat meals. I love my cheat meals. They don't always happen on the weekend. Sometimes they happen during the week, but I've learned to limit them, look forward to them, and enjoy the hell out of them. Work hard, play hard, baby. You work hard. You earn those things, man. And you're proud of them as you should be. Some of those things you post are like competing with my like professional taking, you know, burger shots. So I love it, man. The biggest secret I could let out the bag is that, yeah, I've become kind of like the executive chef of the group, but yeah. I can't for it. My wife and I, we watch a lot of Food Network and I've, I've learned some really cool recipes <laughs> Simple ones off like Guy Fieri, Bobby Flay, and stuff. You know, good, man. And he's there. You're teaching the, the community that. That's what I love. It's like guys are being inspired by you. Shit, I saw Chad, this was a little while back, but he posted like some Korean ribs with like, you know, cauliflower fried rice and, and like some steamed veggies or, or stir fried veggies. And I'm like, that looks good. Like, like that looks really, really good. And that came from you. He's, <laughs> you're his inspiration for that, you know, recipe rehab or whatever you got going on over there at your crib you have the recipe man i mean you know i saw it was an episode you know it was a show called by alton brown years ago and it's like it's like you just you want to get that consistency there but have some fun with it yeah there's some ways to save calories and i'm not always looking to do that but there's ways we can just make it beneficial and add more nutrients into something we're already eating yep and That's just, it just makes it kind of fun. It's like, hey, I like this and this. Let's see how well they blend together. Yep. And they doctor it up this way so I don't have to take a whole bunch of salt-laden sauces and sugar-laden spices. Yeah, and- disgusting, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, there are sauces out there and there are seasonings out there that I use that I'm very careful about. I watch the sugar. I watch the salt. You know, I wanted to try to be a little bit more natural and it's become so easy and so more attainable nowadays. You can go into your local grocery store, no matter where you live and find this stuff without yeah. having a top dollar. Right. You don't have to go organic on everything or farm right. raised grass fed, but when you do, it's going to make a huge difference, yep. you know, but at the same time, you don't have to do it. Just be careful about the preparation. Don't add the extra salt. Don't add the extra sugar. Make it pretty on your plate. Eat some it's more. so true. Like so many people overestimate that that fact. You know, like when I'm talking about black rice and red quinoa and, and throwing some cauliflower on there with either one of those, like those are the colors that appeal to your eyes, right? And when you're eating healthy, of course, like the burger and the fries are going to probably get your choice 
on a Friday or Saturday night. But you, when you're midweek and you know that eating that burger and drinking that beer, that pizza or whatever, and you got to go to the gym the next day, you got to get your workout in and it's gonna, you're going to feel like shit. It's pretty inspiring to eat the salmon, the, you know, the, the quinoa and the asparagus or whatever you're doing. Right. And so it's, it's, it's just a flip of the switch when it comes to your perspective on that. And you have had that, right? Like you are, you're not going back. I mean, that's, and that's, what's amazing to me is like this shift that you've had, it would take a catastrophic life event for you to even come close to the old rim. You're headed to the new guy. You're working on, you are the definition of becoming the most elite version of yourself. And we're watching it every day. And so I want to shift gears over here to community. And I, I don't want you to pat our backs too much. We're a pretty humble crew here. Uh, we, we really like, I'm not good at taking compliments. I own that. But I want to go to the community because not just to highlight your support, the accountability, uh, how available we are to you. But I really want to I really want to highlight the brotherhood, the vulnerability that, that's in there, the dudes that are coming in there and opening up and say, look, guys, I'm dealing with some real shit and I need you guys to help me out with this. We see that on a week to week basis. And that's the kind of stuff that really, really hits home for me, because I know that most men don't have outlets like that and seeing our community starting to blossom and grow with with such a contagious environment that's the word I'm using now is because even I go in there like if I'm not motivated I'll go scroll a little bit it's contagious man like we have built a very 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 strong community we value it greatly obviously and there's no negativity and so I want you to unpack that a little bit for those guys that are listening because Anthony and Zach and I are sitting here like yeah this is what we do all day and this is what we love this is what fuels our fire but like, let's go there because hearing it from you, I mean, look, we could talk about it all day, but hearing it from the horse's mouth, that's literally lost 110 pounds in 198 days. Like I'm still, I'm mind blown. Like I knew, I, I knew in my mind that you were determined to like blow away Justin's thing. I was like, he's, he's going to do it. I started seeing like three months in, I'm like, all right, he's well on his way. But now like 110 pounds in 198 days is insanity to me. And there are guys in this group right now who want to lose a hundred pounds and keep talking about, it's going to take me years. So talk about it. Let's go. Okay. So right from the, right from the very first day that I was in, that you put out an introduction your, post. Your welcome post. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome me. I think it was a matter of 95 minutes and my phone was blowing up because I, I have it on all, all notifications for the group. Right. And it was all kinds of welcome, you know, welcome, welcome, you know, hey, I've been doing, I've been with, you know, the group this long, this is what I've done, this is what I can do, you know, I can help you here, I can help you there, the door is always open, just reach out, you know, Facebook me, text me, you know, call me, whatever, I'm here to help, and I've been in your shoes, and, you know, I'm kind of a competitive guy, you know, but I was a little nervous when I first got in, and, you know, lo and below, lo and behold, this uh, this this random guy that's uh, part of our United States military reaches out and says, "No, hey, best friend, yeah." Hi, I'm Michael. How, how'd you like to? Uh, I'm Michael. How would you like to uh, a, comp a little competition? I'm like, what? This is like <laughs> I, I, I'm in here to change my life, dude. And you're already trying to like fight me. What is going on here? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> competition what did i get myself involved with and he's like oh no 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 no, dude i'm only like a couple days behind you and let's just have a little friendly competition and explain it based around the you know these things called personal best and i'm like what the heck is a personal best i mean because i literally did the app damn it <laughs> i love it and then he's a great guy dude oh okay so it's not something that i gotta like outdo you you know, yeah. when you, you know, you're, you're going to go out and bench 150 pounds and I got to somehow beat that. It's, he explained it on how it's, you start with your baseline with the app and based on either increased repetitions, increased durations, increased weights, increased, you know, all these different factors that can be considered a quote unquote personal best because it was your personal body improving and he said, let's put a time frame on it. And I said, all right, you know, this is October. Hey, let's put Thanksgiving on the menu. All right. No pun intended. And um, Rick's great with puns. You guys seen that shit? Like he's, <laughs> he's like the pun master. I'm always, I'm always surprised. I'm like, dude, wait, what? I didn't catch that. 
no pun intended. He just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the heck is going on? What is my body doing? And it just started thriving for it. And it was just that, you know, competitive edge from testosterone that we all got. And it just started coming out. You know, I started, you know, I relied heavily on the app and I still do, you know, to find out how the, how to do these workouts. There's videos in there and tutorials. And of course the brotherhood, it's like, Hey, how do I do this? Or, Hey, I couldn't get this machine in, or my gym doesn't have this machine or I can't even get to the gym because I'm still using freaking resistance bands because I was a rehab patient for so long. Right. You know, because I had to have both knees replaced in a car accident because some jerk hit me. And so, you know, the brotherhood, you know, just relying on each other and the help and the support, like, hey, man, I'm here for you. You know, send me a Facebook request. I mean, these are complete and utter strangers to me all over the country. And these are guys, and actually, not only around the country. I mean, you know, one of our one of our brothers, Mark, right. Mosley, right. Like, he's overseas in the UK. You know, one thing I was concerned about with the like going back to the nutrition was, you know, I can only I only want to you know eat a bowl and you know eat a handful of nuts here and there because I'm telling you what, man, all that crunching and chewing and chewing and chewing, sometimes my mouth just gets tired. <laughs> He said, well, why don't you, have you ever thought about hummus? I'm like, you know, dude, I love hummus. And I didn't even think about it. So, right. you know, get nutritional advice and tips of things, dishes people tried and everybody swapping recipes and ideas and ways to tweak things. And it's like, it just became a lot of fun because it's like, you know, here's a bunch of guys that have gone through the same thing I'm going through or are going through or trying to improve one way or another, you know, just because someone in the group is, you know, weighs under 200 pounds or just because someone in the group is only trying, you know, needs to only lose 20 pounds or looks a certain way, you know, there's no cookie cutter approach to the way everybody is built in the group, where they've been, where they're coming from, where they're trying to go. It's all different. And we can all share, you know, our, you know, our triumphs, as well as our weaknesses and help each other out. And that's what I love about it. I mean, you know, there's areas I still need to grow and I need to go. We're all growing, dude. That's it. Like we're growing together. And that's, that's the reality is, is, and I, and I put that in a post earlier. I was like, look, we intend to, to everybody that's in our circle right now, we're growing together. Zach and Anthony and myself just got back from a business conference. We are nowhere near the most elite version of ourselves and we all own it and we're working on it daily business, relationships, health, you know, we've got the health thing figured out, but that doesn't mean we don't have our own personal goals. And so when you talk about that, that brotherhood, it's a bond that's been formed for a bigger common goal, right? Like you guys are all in there for your own personal goals, but the, the over, like the, the overarching large goal here is let's, let's all get there, right? It's a, it's a community effort. It's a brotherhood effort. And like I tell guys all the time, I'm like, dude, these are guys that you're going to be going to battle with. You're going to have days that are going to suck. This is life. You know, what we do is a, it's a, it's a one-year partnership, essentially. Dude, you come on board and in the beginning, you're going to, it's going to be exciting. And there's going to be some things that, that, you know, that are fun and exciting about it, but there's going to be days that that's going to kick you in the face and you, you're firsthand, right? You know, like, not every day is going to be good. You've been with us for a while and you've been sick a time or two where you, you're out about a week, you know, and, and we know like that's life. It happens. And so I think when you talk about the brotherhood, like that bond and seeing how you guys have all come together, you're forming lifelong friendships in this thing. Like these are guys that you're going to be in contact with way beyond our time. Now I hope we stay connected for a long time too, but you know what I mean? Like that's just what's happening there. And I, you know, I can't speak highly enough. Um, I know we got a lot of guys from Unleash Your Legacy watching right now, dude. And like, it's been, you know, we're, this is about you and and I just love it, man. And, and what, like, I guess to kind of wrap things up, if you guys got value tonight, drop the word value in the comments. So anybody coming tomorrow, we got quite a few that requested the replay. This is going to be one that we're going to, you know, this is going to be a popular live stream. Not just because they're like, right now I see 14 on live. We had 20 something earlier. There's going to be a lot of guys that watch this. I can promise you that because our team's going to be getting it out. I mean, that's it. And so, uh, what would be like if you had to give give anybody out there on the fence, right? Like they're maybe in a dark spot. What is your advice? It's not just hey, these guys are great. Like in a from a from where were from where you were at in a really dark spot. Like what would you say that would make somebody feel 
confident and comfortable about taking that leap and saying, Hey dude, like, let's come change your life. Cause your life has been changed drastically. You know, it's just, what do you got to lose? Seriously. I mean, it's, it's a phone call. It's a phone yeah. call. I chose to take, you know, I made time for the phone call and just keep it real. You know, no matter which one of you guys reaches out to you, just keep it real. Don't pull any punches. Don't try to sugarcoat it. Don't try to tell them any shit they want. You think they want to hear. Just be yourself. Tell them where you come from. Tell them where you're trying to get to and try and what you, tell them what you try to do. That's what I did. I yeah. just kept it real. And I told them right from the get go, look, I'm skeptical. You know, this may not be. And that's okay. It's a conversation. Like we don't even have, we didn't even have the process in place that we do now with you. Like you and I just, it was a one call deal. Like let's do it. Right. And we had prior calls. So it was a little diff different now. Like our phone call is 15 minutes. There's literally nothing for sale because we protect that community. Like you got to be a match for what we do or you're not coming in. Right. Like we've got, there's a couple guys right now that, that are like, look, I, I really want in. I'm like, no, you're the, your, your support at home sucks. It's only going to sabotage you or, Hey, I don't just really don't vibe with you, man. Like I guard those community walls, just like these guys do. We're not going to just let anybody in there. And so that first phone call, there's literally nothing for sale. What is it going to, what is it going to make a difference in your life? Right. You got nothing to lose for me. I, I want to, I want to tell you my sales experience too. I used to have the same skepticism, but I've bought from quite a few people and I know real as soon as I hear it now, because I do it. And so when I get on the, on the phone with somebody who's truly trying to help me and truly try, it's truly selling from the heart because I have a solution that is going to help you or could potentially change the trajectory of your life, your health, your business, what, whatever struggle you're having. It's like the hesitancy to get on a call because you think that you're going to get suckered into something is, is the, mo the cr most craziest mindset in, in, to me because if it's a possible solution to literally transform your life, right? We're not just about health, dude. We want you to become the most elite version of yourself. We want you to fulfill your potential as a man. And in order to be able to do that, we got to have a conversation. This isn't just all about the DMs. You can talk to me all day in the DMs and blow me up. But until you have a real conversation, like, let's open up. Let's figure out if we can truly help you. And if we can, then we'll schedule another call and I'll take you behind the scenes. Zach will take you with Anthony and we'll show you everything about the community. And at that time, you'll have an opportunity to potentially make that decision if we invite you to come join us. And that's it. That's the process now. And so that first phone call is literally, hey, if we can help you, we'll have another call if you're interested. If we cannot help you, we are going to get some resources in your hands that are going to benefit you moving forward no matter what, as long as you put in the work. Most guys get those resources. They don't ever watch a damn thing because they're not ready. They don't want to take action. They're not, they're not ready to, to move. And you know, as well as I do, that you got to show up and that's it. Half the battle is showing up. You got to get these guys to schedule a call and don't show up the call. Sorry, bro. You're probably never going to win. Like that's just not it. Right. And so I love that you went there, Rick, because I'm passionate about it. Don't waste our time. If you want to help, you want real help with three proven professionals with a proven track record. We're showing up every week. We don't go anywhere. We don't hide. This is not a transactional business for us. This is from the heart, dude. And like you are a, a, a living example of, what we're about, like you are a shining model student. And there's a lot of guys in here watching right now from the community that are right behind you, dude. And it's great to see. So I appreciate you taking the time today. Um,